Hello again. There's been a big new oil find under the North Sea. It's so big that it could produce 300,000 barrels of oil a day, and there are 35 gallons in every ballon. This vast deposit of oil lies 75 miles northeast of the Shetland Islands, which themselves are about 160 miles off the northeast coast of Scotland. The oil will be taken by pipeline to Shetland, but getting it out of the ocean will be a big problem. The sea there is 500 feet deep, and when the drill reaches the bottom, it then has to get through 10,000 feet of rock to get to the oil. A drilling rig can cost between 40 and 50 million pounds, and it'll be at least a year before anyone knows just how much oil there is in this latest undersea reservoir. Another big snag is the weather. In this area of the North Sea, it's some of the worst in the world, with constant gales and massive waves. Once the oil does get to Shetland, it's going to change the way of life of the people who live in these remote islands. Many Shetlanders feel that when the rich oilmen move in, the traditional industries of herring fishing, knitting and farming will be threatened. This is because the oil companies will be able to pay higher wages. But other people say that the changes will all be for the better, because they'll give the islands more prosperity. One thing is certain, the oil that comes through Shetland in a few years' time will mean that Britain won't have to rely completely on oil from the Middle East, and shortages like the one we've got at the moment might be avoided. In Yugoslavia, two young British plane spotters have been sentenced to four years each in prison for spying. Roger Curtis from London, who was on holiday in Yugoslavia with his friend Paul Mason when they were arrested at Mostar Airport for spying on military aircraft. They both said that the plane spotting was their hobby and quite harmless, but the police didn't believe them. This afternoon I asked Paul's mother, Mrs Marjorie Mason, if she thought it possible they were spies. Been plane spotters since I bought him his binoculars as a all level present. There's no no reason at all to think that they're spies. They haven't don't have the time or anything. They're just interested in aeroplanes. And now you've just heard that uh, both Paul and his friend are going to have to serve four years in jail in Yugoslavia. How do you feel now? Well, the quickest way to get them out is, um, is the unwell. We shall work as hard as we can to get them out now because they must be made to understand that our way of life is different from theirs and if and these boys are not spies there's, there's no harm in them at all the magazine which that examines all kinds of things for sale has been looking at craft kits which might appeal to people from eleven upwards and it thinks that three of them could be very dangerous the first is the Dippet fantasy film it's a kit for colouring wire shapes and which says that the colouring liquid stained clothes and hands and gives off a vapour which could make you feel very ill. And it's also highly inflammable. But the tin does carry a warning saying that children using the kit should be supervised. Well, the enamel craft kit could also catch fire. And says the magazine, the hardener could irritate the skin and it's impossible to get off clothes once it's hardened. And the red and the yellow paint contain lead, which is poisonous. Well, the makers said that the colours had now been changed, but which said that there was a lot of lead in the kit they bought only two months ago. Well, the most dangerous kit, according to which, was this one, the Enamel Air Kit. It has a little kiln with what looks like a handle where the flex comes out. Well, this gets very hot and it could burn a child badly. And the yellow and green paints had a lot of lead and arsenic in them, which are both dangerous. Well, the makers say that they've never had any complaints about children being burned or poisoned, but which says that they think children shouldn't use this kit at all. On New Year's Day, two men and one girl are going to set out for an epic round-the-world journey, rowing all the way. Derek King, Peter Bird and Carol Mayston are using the Britannia II, the same boat that John Fairfax and Sylvia Cook used two years ago when they rowed across the Pacific. It's 35 feet long with plenty of room to lie down, but little shelter from rough weather. The round-the-world journey is 24,000 miles and it'll take them about two and a half years. They leave Gibraltar on the 1st of January, go across the Atlantic and through the Panama Canal, then across the Pacific 
past Australia and over the Indian Ocean. They hope to be allowed through the Suez Canal. It's blocked by large ships at the moment, but they hope a rowing boat will get through. Then up the Mediterranean and back to Gibraltar. Well, today, the three rowers were trying out their boat on the Thames in London. Their leader, Derek King, has done one long-distance row before, single-handed around Ireland. The others haven't, but Carol says that she will row on equal terms with the men. One of the biggest problems we're all facing these days is what to do with the growing mountains of rubbish we throw away as life gets richer and more wrapped up. Plastic wrappings are the biggest problem. And unlike paper and cardboard, plastic won't rot away with the weather. But scientists in Japan may have found a solution. David Smeaton reports for Newsround. For years now, scientists have been trying to find a plastic that's non-poisonous and can be easily destroyed. And now a firm in Japan says it's done just that. They've produced a new material called pululum. It's made in a laboratory by growing yeast together with starch that you get from corn or potatoes or by mixing with products from dates. And the result is this powder. And if you mix water with pululum, you can use it to press out solid plastic shapes. It can also be used to make a very strong glue. And another way you can use this new starch plastic, you can draw it out into fibers. So there's a prospect perhaps even of clothes from it. And you can also use it to make what we all recognize the normal flimsy plastic for wrapping things up. Well, the next point is, how do you get rid of it? Easily. No harm. No harm. What other things have you made from this? Well, we made breads and rolls, cookies and biscuits with it. Well, there you have it. A new plastic made from starch that you can eat, that's non-poisonous, and can be easily got rid of. If it can be made cheaply in commercial quantities, it could work a revolution in our lives and our homes. And you never know, there may come a day when we don't have to take the sandwich out of the wrapper before we eat it. Mm. Farmers in the north of Scotland are being taught new ways of rounding up their cattle. At a special one-day course, they're learning how to lasso cows Wild West style. The farmers are shown how to make a lasso and tie the special knots, but they're also getting real practical experience in the art of steer roping. The cows they are learning on are friendly enough, but many of the cows that roam the Scottish Highlands are almost wild. Highland cattle don't see people very often, and they don't like coming down to the farms. And when they need special medical treatment, the farmers and vets have to go out to them. But the cattle have still got to be caught, and farmers think that roping them cowboy fashion might be the answer. And that's all for us for now. We'll be back with you round again next Tuesday. Bye-bye.